Right, today we are going to draw the Flying Scotsman. The most famous steam locomotive in the world, to what most people say. And all you will need for this is a piece of paper, a rubber, and a pencil. Right, let's get started. To make things easier for ourselves, we're going to start in the centre of the boiler at the front. So what you need to do first is... On the left hand side of your paper, about a third of the way down from the top, draw a tiny little circle. Try and press on as lightly as possible because we're going to darken it later in the drawing. And off that circle you're going to do two little sticks. Then after that you're going to do a bigger circle. It goes all the way around. Don't worry if your circle is not perfect, mine certainly is not. Above the circle, a thin rectangle. And we're going to put the number in there later. Then on top is a little dot, either side of the dot, some more very thin sticks. There we go. And above that we've got a bit of an arch shape. This is going to have our uh, plate on it. Now on the plate would usually be the name of the tour. Now usually on the tour it's the Flying Scotsman is written on this plate. So like an arch shape, it's got a little bend each side. And the top arch is smaller than the bottom. Okay. Right, next bit, we're going to do the full face of the front of the boiler now, so that's our centre of our circle right there, that dot, so that's got to be our basis, but I'm going to go up to the top first to help us, and then just above the arch, top arch, you start your circle, that's the top of our circle there, and you work your way around very slowly, no need to rush, Circles are not the easiest to draw freehand. There we go. Notice how I didn't talk while I was doing that to keep my concentration. It's very important when you need to concentrate on a bit of drawing, you are quiet to steady your hand and focus your mind. It's very important that. Inside that circle, we're going to draw another one. So we've got two big circles. There we go. Right. That's the front of our boiler. That's first big step done. Right then. Either side of the boiler we've got what's called smoke deflectors. Now they help the smoke come out of the chimney and go up away from the locomotive rather than travelling down the boiler. So we'll start on the this side and work our way along. We've got a little stick poking out from the circle. Then we have a little bit of an angle. And then another slightly curved line. Now we've got to line this up here. So the bottom of the little stick, just go slightly below that and do a pretend line across. And there we go. Now we have a little lip at the end, connect the two together. And then that's our smoke deflector for that side. Now we just need to do a few lines that connect it. They're very faded. We won't really see them much when we put a bit of shading on. Okay, there we go. Right, the other one. Now this one, because we've already got one in place, this is going to help us, I think. So we do our pretend line again, go across to the side. Another little line. That's the angle bit, less angle this time because of the way the locomotive is pointing. We do our curve, go along again, put a dot, another curve line down. There we go. Okay, now we need to do a straight line off. It's going to go slightly downwards, this straight line. There we go. Same with the bottom, but this time we're going upwards. So another straight line. 
We're going to join the two together with a curved line. Here we go. Join them up. Inside this, there's a very small line here. And there's a slightly bigger. This is a handle, I do believe, here on the top bit. So we'll draw that one on. There we go. And I'm just going to thicken that line a little bit. There we go. Right, that's our two smoke deflectors done already. Excellent. Now we're going to do the top of the boiler, I think, next. So, very top edge of the boiler. We're going to work our way down very slowly, just straight line, very down. Make sure you stay above that smoke deflector there, that's very important. Okay, that's going to give us a sense of perspective. Right, we need the funnel. So we're going to take a pretend line up, and then about centre, we do a little lip. And that lip curls outwards. And then we have the bump. Now we have to work our way across to, let's see, not quite lined up with that. So take a step inwards from the inner circle on the boiler. So we're going to take one step there. Do a pretend line up. Draw on the lip again. And then we can connect our funnel. There we go. Right, draw an inner line there to show the curve. And then on top, there's another line just inwards of the top of there. There we go. So you've got the wider line underneath and a thinner line on top. That's the top of our funnel. And we'll draw a little bit of smoke coming out there later. Now, just behind the funnel, there's a tiny bump. We'll draw that on there. There we go. Right, we've made good progress there so far. Right, we need to go along the boiler, so after the funnel, go, go along, so just above the smoke deflector, do a curved line going upwards like that. There we go. Right, now we've covered all this area, we're going to work our way down now and go under the front of the boiler. Now we're going to work on this side, we've got the cylinders that connect from the boiler to the cylinders at the side of the locomotive. So we've got these pipes here. Now we've got to line this up, so we've got to get to the bottom of the boiler, do a little step, about, say about a finger's width. And we've got to draw our straight line. Now this is a tiny bit tricky for me because I actually have the camera pod in the way a little bit, so it makes my drawing a lot more difficult than you guys. So draw a nice long straight line, and this straight line will actually go beyond the smoke deflector. Do a pretend line down, and that's where we get to, and then we go a little bit further, and that's where your line wants to end up. Now we go back across, we need to complete the line this side. Let's have a look where we are. So about halfway along this smoke deflector, we want to stop this line here, look. There we go. Okay. Right. Bit fiddly, this bit here. Lots of straight lines that create lots of steps. So let's sort out the bit we came back to here. Let's go back up to our connection. And this is where another step moves. So find the smoke deflector, go inwards a little, down, and we create a step there, look. There's our step, right there. Then our pipe work needs to connect onto that, just like that. Create a second line for that. Now right underneath the boiler, there's a little bit of a squaring off right there so we put a line down from our boiler there and see so we've got to do it this side as well see how I'm guiding myself with the pencil to help me and there we go and we've got to do the step this side as well so let's find that step now this step will come across a little bit here 
But don't worry about that, we'll just draw over that. Because we're on the left hand side of the locate, locomotive, we're going to see that bit more. And that curves downwards, so we'll sort that bit out in a minute. Right, we need to do the pipe from this side, I think, first. So halfway down the smoke deflector on this side, put a little dot and do a very shallow angled line downwards. Then we're going to curve it off. And then we can see more of this side because this is the side we're on. It's wider at the top, then thins down a little bit. So we'll work our way down to that step. Because that step actually continues actually all the way past here. So if we keep going with that step, and we'll stop that about there for now. And let's see, we've got a line going down a little bit there. There's our first little bit downwards. And we'll do the same the other side. There we go. Right. Then we're going to go back on ourselves there. We've got another little box. Back across. And we stop about just in line with that pipework that's going down there. Right. Excellent. Now this is where things get a little bit fiddly here because we've got to do some curved lines going downwards. So from the top, the base of the... Right, carry on. The camera decided to cut off for no, no apparent reason there, so we will continue. Right then, where were we? Let's see. Right, we need to create another step this side. Join up with this. The little square down bit. There we go. Then inside this, we've got to create another step. Yes, lots and lots of steps. There we go. Looks like creating steps on our stairs. And then we're going to go downwards and create another step. A bit fiddly doing this, but there we go. Okay. And then we're going to draw just a little line connecting our two curved bits there. That's actually going to be our buffer beam in a moment. So let's see. At the end of the locomotive here, where our outer step is, we've got a little curved line. Now we're actually not going to see most of that curved line in a minute because we're actually going to put a, uh, a light on there in a moment. But we can continue our buffer beam line. So take your bottom most line now, connect that up. And we'll do a little line on the end to show that's our end. There we go. Come back to this side. Now this bit we've got to be very careful where we stop here. So I'm going to line it up the bottom of the smoke deflector. So we do our pretend line down from the bottom corner of the smoke deflector. Do 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 do. There we go right there. Stop there. Do a little little line down. That tells us that that's our buffer beam. Right. Now what we'll do, we'll add our little lights on first. So a little box with a circle in and a hook on top. And that's it, that's all we need to do. So same this side, find the other end of the buffer beam, little box, circle in the middle, little step up, hook on top, done. Right, that's our two little lights. Now there's one in the middle, right in the middle of this buffer beam. This is a slightly bigger one. So, Let's make it a bit boxier. No time drawing straight over the line, so don't need to worry about that. And we do a little hook on top. There we go, done. Now this side, we need to connect the buffer beam up to our step up here. So we go along, and we create our curve right there. Now we can work on the buffer beam. So two lines down, two very short lines. This side we've got to connect it up, make a second curved line up, upwards, and there, right there. Nice curved line, nice and steady. Good. Right, we need some buffers. 
No, actually, first we'll do the little bit of pipe work that's at the top of the buffer beam here. So draw a little square, a line going upwards, like that. Then coming off it, a curved line, which is a pipe. So we do a little squiggly line, squiggle, 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 over the pipe, show it's a pipe. There we go. Right, middle of the buffer beam, we need the hook. And there goes our hook. So we do an upward pointing hook. That's for the coupling. Coming off that hook, a little box, small box. And underneath that, a slightly bigger box. Then either side of that, two tiny boxes. And then we have to go down it and we have a rectangular shape going downwards. Like that. And then going across this, we've got a couple of little lines. So we'll just draw them in there, two going up that way. And then they cross right here with another pair. And that's that bit done. Now underneath our little rod here, we have a very thin box. I've only just noticed this. That points downwards and we put that box in as well right the buffers so underneath our light we need to draw a circle so very small buffers yeah, they don't need to be that big and because we're on the left hand side we find our curved line on this side, we line it up with the edge of our buffer, we draw another one there. And then coming off the buffers you'll see a slight little stick that curves. That shows how they're connected to the buffer beam. There we go. Draw a little line because the buffer beam goes behind the buffer there. But underneath, we, we go from the bottom of the buffer, across, connect up to just above the end of that box. Then on the other side, under the buffer again. But we can see it curve up this time, so we do our little curly whirly S. There we go. Mine's not perfectly straight, but doesn't matter. And that's that bit connected. Right. Excellent. Now, underneath this buffer here, we've got a little blacked out area of a step. Now, these are actually for the steps for the crew to get aboard the loco at the front to do the cleaning and check over the thing. So we put that little bit in there. Then there are some connectors when connected to coaches or wagons or any other loco. Two little connectors there and they're connected to hoses. So we've got two little boxes and we do some curved hoses and at the ends we do some little boxes at the end as well. Now the front wheel on the right hand side of the loco, your left hand side, we can only see the edge of it. So we just draw a very shallow circle. or oval shape, downwards goes below everything we've done. You can see I've had to change my angle very slightly because that wasn't quite correct. And we join it up there. It's not perfect, I'm not completely happy with it, but there we go. Then underneath our central box area we draw a little line and that's going to connect to our other wheel behind there. Now the reason I'm not too fussed by that, most of that is in shadow, so we don't need to worry about that. When we come back to shade that later, we don't need to worry. Right, on this side of the front box area, we've got to draw a little shape. Now this is this connects the four wheels at the front of the loco, and it's called a bogey. And this bogey connects the four front little wheels together and they turn together as one. Now we draw up to about just underneath that buffer there and then we draw another oval. 
Now this is very important, the bottom of this has got to be exact same height as this one here. So we do a pretend line across, there we go. But this side we can see a lot more of this wheel, because this is the side we're on. So we've got to draw a second line down, that shows the thickness of the wheel. We'll draw it down, curve it to the bottom. Now we've got to make our way back up. Now you can't easily see the top of this wheel. So we're actually going to leave a little bit of a gap to the buffer beam there. And we've got to do the other step this side. So just under the buffer beam. Make it line up with our step this side. Turn line across again. There's one step, and actually you can see the second little bit sticking out. Little line, that's all it is. And that's it. And what we can do here is add some little details, some little sticks. They're the spokes of the wheel. So there's some little sticks in there. And that's the spokes of the wheel. There we go, that's it. That's all we need to do for that bit. Right. Now, next bit we'll move on to is the cylinders, I think. Right, the cylinders. Right. From the corner of the buffer beam here, we're going to draw a circle. And it goes out below. Round, big circle. And it comes about halfway up. That curved shape that connects the buffer beam to the top plate of the loco there. So we'll make a nice big circle. And we do another little bit there. That just shows its depth. I've got there. Okay. Then about not all the way to the top of the circle. We've got to draw a little line. And that little line just curves off just underneath this step here. So right there, look, there we go. And then we've got to draw another line at the bottom of this. Now, to get the length, we go to the end of the smoke box, the smoke deflector, do a pretend line down, put our dot there, and connect the two up there. Do a long shallow curve upwards till we're pointing straight upwards. And then at the top of the box, we do a slight curve. Now we line it up with our other curve at the start there, look, and we can actually draw a line connecting the two. That's the cylinders there. That's the outer cylinders drawn up. Right, underneath we've got some pipe work, some little pipes. You can just make them out. Now we've got to be very careful with these because when we add the shading in, these will actually show through as white, completely white. So try your best to try and keep them nice and clear. We've got one that goes up and under the thing, under the um, cylinders, and we have another one that goes along. Let's see, same length and stops it. That's nice and straight. There we go. Now we can draw the second wheel on this side, the little wheels, the front driving wheels. So. At the end of the curve under the cylinder, start your wheel going downwards. There we go. Underneath. Now it's not going to be level with this one. It's going to be back a bit. It's going to be level with this one here. So we need to draw a pretend line. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be enough. That's going to give it start to give us more perspective. Now we end the curve there. Then we'll make our way back up on the curve. There we go. Be careful not to go over our little pipe work. Now create a second curve from there inwards. That shows the thickness of the wheel. And you can draw an extra line in there as well. Now we can actually see the center of this wheel this time. So we can actually put a little bit of a circle in. But it'd be more like an oval because we're not directly looking at it face on. There we go. And off there we can do some little spokes. 
Again, these little lines here, they're called spokes. Here we go. Not perfect, but it will do. Right, let's go back up above the cylinders. We need to start connecting these boxes up and making them a bit longer now, I think. So this line straight above the cylinders, we're going to go, go along a little bit. Not by much, about the same width as the cylinder we go along. So we go along to about here. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to draw the next line. Go along to about the same distance. I'm going to stop there. And our third line above is already about there. So we're actually pretty close to our estimate with what we wanted. So that's good there. We're happy with that. Now we're going to do a lot of darting up and down for the next bit because there's a lot of bits and bobs we've got to do. So I think first what we'll do, we will stick, try and stick to the bottom and do the main driving wheels and all the rods that connect them. Now once we've got that we can then go up above and do the boiler, which I think is the most important. So I think we'll do that bit next. Right then, the main wheels. But I think just before we do the main wheels, we're going to add a little bit of track to it now, just to help us guide us along. So you see where these two wheels are here? We draw a straight line connecting to. That straight line goes along a little bit. There we go. We'll come back later and actually sort the track out properly. Now, these two here need to be connected by another line. There we go. Now, you'll notice the two lines don't connect. And that's right, because there's two separate rails. Eat for each side of the loco. Okay, right, that's ha I'm happy with that. Now work our way upwards very slightly upwards. That's all, we just keep following that line upwards, straight as you can. It's not going to be perfect. Mine certainly is not. But that's just going to give us a helpful little guide. Right, I'm just going to have a little look. Mm, it's not bad. Right then, big wheels. Now we're going to start right here, our little pipes, the top one there. It's coming out behind the um, cylinders. We'll start drawing our big wheels. Now they're much bigger. We draw down, slowly curving down to the line. Touch the line, and then we're going to start, start working our way back up. Nice steady oval shape. Okay, there we go there. Right, we need to have the thickness of the wheel. Now we can't see it because it goes behind the other one. Once we have that bit in there, that's that bit done. Now, now we need to draw another line on the inside. So we're basically doing it inside line as well that follows the shape so we've got an inside line there as well now okay now we need to find the center of the wheel a bit tricky because we can't actually see the top of the wheel because it goes inside here so just about around the cylinders here roughly is where it is now we're very lightly going to put that circle in very lightly because actually we're not going to be able to see that soon when we put all the rods on that disappears completely so we're very lightly just put it in as a little guide more than anything else right we'll leave that there because we can't do the rods until we've actually done all three of the main drive wheels on this side so what we need to do is do the next one so to help us along we find the center point here and that's going to start our wheel off. Now we'll work our way down once again. Slowly curving away. Touch the rail. Same thickness as this one. So if you need to measure it, do so. If that helps you. Slow curve back up. And we're going to get to about here again. And we're going to stop there. Same on the side. Work it way up. Stop about there. Now we've not drawn that bit yet, we're going to come back to that shortly. We need to get these three wheels in first so it's going to give us our measurement. So we've got to do the same process again. We do the thickness of the wheel first, so a line behind, that disappears behind the front wheel. 
an inside line all the way around again so we do that fill that in there and that covers that bit off nicely and again we put a rough very very light center of the wheel again there we go lovely right we've got one more to do so i'm going to extend my track a little bit just to give me the guide i need there we go and we put our third wheel in same process again create our oval i've made a bit of a mess of this one but no worry we keep going plow on in fact this is the rare occasion i'm actually going to have to use the rub and rub that out because i'm totally not happy with that that's a disaster that one right let's change it that's better there we go got the angle much better this time try to avoid using the rubber unless that's absolutely necessary because we can draw over most of the things we have but with that one it wouldn't have worked because it was not easy to show so we've got our oval shape same process again do the bit behind the thickness of the wheel disappears behind the wheel our inner inner line all the way around again there we go and a very soft centered part of the wheel right there okay we've got our three main drive wheels now brilliant now above these wheels we need to do a little step now we couldn't do this bit until we'd drawn these wheels on so what we're going to do now where we stopped here we actually have to curve upwards very slightly not by much but we actually have to curve upwards above that top step there because that's actually going to create yes i'm going to say it another step and that steps there and that goes along and if we do a pretend line up from the very center of that wheel step 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 do a dot curve it off and that is our next step so another step upwards and we draw a line coming off there and then we have to thicken it up so we go underneath and make that just that little bit thicker and then we go along and we're gonna stop just after this third wheel with this line so we'll go along uh, i think about there now we've got another line that goes underneath that one and we stop in the same place stop now this bit is a little fiddly on the this side of the center wheel we actually curve back down slightly so we take the bottom line here drop it down slightly and then go underneath that one again so we have three lines going that way now we just join it off like that there we go right now the tops of these wheels actually go into these little arches on the inside we can't actually see the tops of the wheels what we've got to draw these little arches on so the, above the front main wheel Above all the steps, we draw a little arch. There we go. Just a little arch. I'm going to show how thick it is. There it is. Lovely. And then for the centre wheel, we do the exact same. We leave a little gap. We drew the thickness bit first. So we've got a tiny bit there. Then the arch. Now this one is slightly different because usually on the center arch of any steam locomotive if it has main driving is there the nameplate is there so we've got to square it off and make that slightly bigger because on there it says flying scotsman and that's where the nameplate is right there there we go we make that just a tiny bit taller there we go and then we've got our third arch so we go along again go above the third wheel and draw our third arch in make it the thickness of it too and there's our third arch so we now have our three arches for our three wheels again i've not touched the tops of the wheels i'm leaving that for now until i put in the rods that drive the wheels which we're going to do shortly but first of all we're going to continue our track along 
not too far, always do it a step at a time because you don't want to go too far in case you make a wobbly line. So just do it a little bit at a time and I find that tends to help when drawing logos at an angle. Now we've got another set of wheels. Now these are support and this supports the cab of the loco. So we need to draw a frame. Now behind the last of the main wheels we draw a line upwards, follow the line of the track. And then we find the centre of the third wheel here. Pretend line along, dot on the edge of the wheel, draw another line. These lines have got to be parallel to each other, like that. Connect them together. Draw a line going upwards. In fact, I might need to make that a little bit taller, but I don't really need to worry about that. Draw a line going upwards, there we go. And then leave a gap, draw another line going upwards. Create a little dot on the end. Now we need to draw the wheel. So again, it's the same process. Curve it down at an angle, so create an oval. Now I'm going to stop there because you can't actually see the top of this wheel. Create the thickness of it right there. And then again, it's got another line inside it. So we show that there. And we've got a circle here. That's one of the connectors of the wheel. So we draw that in. A little rectangular box above it. Like so. Now we're getting close to drawing the cabin now. So at the top of this box here, or a curving line away from the point, just a little one, until you're at the edge of the wheel. And we can stop there. Now that bit we can now connect the frame of lines that we did earlier. So we take our top line, gently curve it downwards at an angle, until we get to that dot and then curve it straight again. There we go, and we've got one more to do that connects the two, so we do the same again. There we go. And that leads us to the cab area. So we'll continue with that bit next. Right, we'll do the bottom of the cab now. Let's see now. Take our line we've just uh, connected up to, around here, there we go. Draw a line going along, just a short line, we don't need it to be very long. There we go, we stop there. Now we draw a second line underneath, and stop. Now we'll connect together all our bits underneath. So we've got a wing-like shape here, so you do a triangle to a straight line, do another one after that. And that's that bit connected up there, followed by a small box, and then a bigger box. Make it three three dimensional with a third line there. And we can draw two lines going off it connecting to that bit. Now I'll draw the start of the cab. So on this line here, draw a nice straight line going straight upwards. Now we are going to have to stop and check it in a moment, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to stop about there. We may need to make that a little bit longer, but I'm going to leave it for a moment. I think what we need to do is aim for about that rail on our smoke deflector. Do a pretend line across, and I need to make mine a tiny bit taller, so about there. That may change slightly as we build the local. I may have found I've made it too tall, not high enough, but we'll get to that. We can change it. So what we'll do now, we'll go back to the wheels and sort them out so we can get them finished. So we need to create all the rods. I connect all the wheels together. So first bit first, get to the cylinders and we're going to draw a little rectangle coming right out just below the top. And that covers the length of the wheel there. 
So a nice little rectangular shape with two little squares inside it. That bit's done there, okay, happy with that. Above that, going right over the top of it, draw a nice little twig going down like that. That goes down to below our circle. Draw another line going across the bottom, and then it actually goes back up again. So you've got an L shape. Then we start another one here, right in the middle. Box that one off. And this one goes right the way up here. So we start here, right in the middle, and we're going all the way over here. So draw a straight line. All the way across, another line underneath it. And we do a little bit of a circle on the end. And that's one of our rods right there. Underneath uh, where that is, draw a circle. There we go. Underneath that circle, we want a little rectangular box with three lines. I've made that a bit darker so you can see it. And to the right of that, draw a little circle. Okay. Then once we've done that circle, we need to go back this way with some lines. Now we're going to stop just before the edge of this wheel here. So we go across, stop. Go across, stop. Okay, that's another rod. Draw another circle. Then we draw another little line going upwards. Then draw another box just above that one we did before, the other rod. Little box. Okay, that's another one done. Coming off that box, we now need to draw a little line words going upwards at an angle. Like that. And that stops kind of in the middle of nowhere, which is not overly helpful. We draw a little circle on the end there. And then we go back to our little box we did here, draw another section above there. Coming off that box again is another line, and that goes up here. We, can't, we don't see where that goes, it kind of goes up into the corner like that. So that's that one then. There's another line here, just in between, so we squeeze that one in there. Okay. And now we've got one more to go. So off our centre one here, which we did first, draw almost a straight line going across. Draw a second line underneath it to connect it. Then do a circle on the end. And then we have a little line coming off it with another circular thing. And that's the rods pretty much complete, apart from a small cable we've got to do. So we go up to a, our archway a bit there, go right below the archway, little circle, we do a little wire that connects that. So we do a little curved line that connects it up to there. And that's pretty much the rods complete. Right then. Now we've got all the wheels, the wheels done, the rods connecting them. We've got most of the lower part of the loco now done for the main part. I think what we'll do, we'll just add the spokes in for the main wheels. So again, it's lots of thin lines in pairs. And we just work our way around. You follow the curvature of the wheel. So you gradually work your way around. And you can't see any up here, so we'll leave that up there for now. So again on the second wheel, work your way around from what you can see. Now you can see a little bit in the middle, but up here we can't see as much. I think we need to do a little bit of work. Yes we do though, I have actually missed a tiny little bit there. So draw a straight line there. We'll connect that up and another line underneath that one. And just above this little bit here, yes, I've missed that little bit. We can join them. Now you can't see anything else in there because that's all in shadowy tones there. So we'll leave that. Right, the final wheel at the end, same again. Work your way along. 
add the spokes. And this one you can see a lot more. Except that circle needs to be far bigger than that. There we go, that's better. Made the circle on that one way too small. This one you can see a little bit above. Not a lot, but you can see a little bit. Now you can actually extend the wheels now as well. Particularly this last one, you can see a lot more. There's a lot less bits in the way than on the other one. You can just make out the other wheels, but not as much as that last one. There we go. Kept it simple. There's probably a few more spokes. I've probably not added all of them, I don't think. Just a rough gauging there, but we'll leave it at that for now. Now, let's see. I'm just going to add... And this bit of rail, actually, you can see in between these two wheels. It's the only other time you can actually see it. So I've just drawn that in. And then just in front of this wheel here, there's a little lip, step, and a bit in there. There we go. I've added that in there. And there's a little bit on the other side as well. I shall do that as well. See, once you pause for a few moments to have a look, you often notice things you may have missed. So it's very important just to take a few minutes every so often just have a look see if you've missed anything or something's not quite right you may need to change it right let's see i think now what we'll do we're going to go to just below the center of the end of the smoke deflector so here little dot help me gauge it then you want to draw a line that's going to end up at this line here. You're going to gradually go downwards very slightly. You're going to follow the perspective of the loco. So we're going into the distance. So we're going to go slightly downwards, just slightly. Now I'm drawing this very, very lightly here. And I'm going to stop just short of the line, just there. There we go. Now I may have to alter that slightly in a moment. That, yeah, I'm just doing that now just to gauge if that's correct. Now above it, you've got to draw another line. This one is actually a handrail. So we're going to go just above, we're going to go back there. Draw along. Now this one actually goes slightly wider in a moment. So when we get above the third of the driving wheels, we're going to go a little wider. There we go. And it bends slightly back in again. And we stop there as well, just above the other line. Okay. Now that's going to help us with the, that's kind of a helpful guide using that because we can come down to this corner where we have our angle. Now just above that, I want to draw a line going up at an angle to the bottom of our straight lines we've just drawn. So there we go. Now that's the, uh, that's where the entrance, that's where the coal is put into the boiler. That's actually the firebox there. I always, uh, always say that's the firebox, that's the smoke box. This bit's the firebox. Right. There's another little pipe here. There. And we can actually thicken our first line up now, so we'll go back along. We can thicken that line up. There we go. Much thicker now. Now we're going to just do a curved line here, and that's going to show the angle, the shape of the boiler, because it's curved all the way down. You can't really see it after the front, so we have that curved line in there. Now, where we draw these lines up to, we've got to draw a line going down at an angle, and that goes down all the way down about here I think roughly here we go now we've got two little holes here here we go right we now need to work on oh, we'll do the top of the loco next I think so we stopped above our smoke deflector all the way back up here now so we're going to slowly draw along, let's go, slowly going downwards, very slowly going downwards, but we're actually going to curve upwards slightly in a moment. So when we're just above 
the centre main driving wheel, draw your pretend line, look, there we go, pretend line. We've got to do a dome. So on the edge of the smoke deflector, start your dome, going up, and when we get to that point we've just drawn, that's the end of the dome. And we can draw a little bit in there to show it's got some shape, dip it down slightly, and that's the dome that's in the centre of the boiler. Now from that we're going to draw a slight upward curving line, very slightly. And we should be about, if we do our pretend line down, at the end of the centre driving wheel, which we are. Now, then we've got some little bumps we've got to add in. This is where the whistles are. So we draw them in there, we slowly work our way downwards, so we're curving back downwards now. Yep, I'm happy with that. Then we've got another bump here that leads into the top of the cab. Now you're thinking the cab's here, but it curves in a moment. I'm going to find out if we've got all this lined up. So we're going to start a curve from that bump and it's going to slowly curve down until we meet our line here, which it has done. Excellent, that's what we wanted. And we draw a second line coming down this, curves as well, but not as much, and curves down to meet our line that we drew for the cab earlier. There, there we go. Now, it's not very visible, but there is a tiny little window. Tiny little window in there. It's a very odd shaped window, very curved. And we draw that in there. Now, we've got to carry on with the cab line. So we draw the top of the cab line. So right at the top of the cab, we draw a line slowly going downwards again, like we did before. But we stop about there. We only go past, just past this line. So we do a pretend line up, we go to about there. That's it. Just going to draw that line in a bit deeper now, because we said we were going to. Just do it lightly, so if I can just make that a tiny bit darker now so I can see it a bit better. Right, on the point of where the roof of the cab meets the side, we need to do another line going downwards. And we stop there. Now we've got two windows to add now. So we add them in. Now we draw a line downwards. Now we, we are lucky because it's level with this pipe here which is very helpful for us. So we draw the first one, so a little line across, back up again, that's window one. Same again, same process, we've got a second window. This one is a tiny bit bigger, I believe, this window. So we make it just a tiny bit wider, but there's our second window. Now next to the second window, we curve away, because the roof curves away at the top. And then we connect it up with a long curving line at the top. There we go. Now underneath these two windows there's another little rail. We add the rail in. There. Excellent. Now to finish off, little lip outwards and draw a line straight down. And that is the end of the cab line. Right then. Now we're going to add a bit more life to this picture. We're going to draw a person. It's the driver sticking out the side of the cab. So, what we need to do is next to our windows, draw a little thin oval. Now, that's his hat. Now, below that, you can draw a little circular shape. That's it. Underneath that circle, draw a line going down and away. And then another one going back in. Add another line inside that. Just going to straighten that line off. There we go, that's better. And that's it. That's the person. Because it's so far away, you don't need to add much detail. That's it. It's just to show the hint that is there. That's all we need. 
Right, so let's have a look. So, we're now going to draw the tender. I think we'll add the tender on next, then we can add a bit more detail where we need it. So, behind the little person you've just drawn, who's the driver, just at the bottom of his head, on his shoulder, do an upward curving line. Like that. Okay. Then do a line straight up until we are level with the top of the windows roughly. I'm happy with that. Do draw your pretend line to help you. Then do a curve. That is then followed. Above that little curve is a curve that's going to go back towards the edge of the roof. So we draw that in there like that. Okay, I've darkened that in so it's easier to see. Okay, right, that's the top part of the tender that connects to the cab. We're now going to go down to the bottom and we're going to draw a little line next to the cab right there. And I think we'll draw another line next to that. There we go. Now the bottom of the tender I'm going to draw a little line going along away from the locomotive, the boiler or the cab, I should say. I want to stop about there. It's just a bit of a guideline to start with. We, we will probably have to make that a bit longer in a moment. And I'm going to do the same with the rail. Extend my rail along. There we go. That's going to allow us to start working on the wheels of the tender. Now the tender has got four wheels each side. So eight wheels in all. We only can draw four of them because we're on the left hand side. Which is a lot of wheels. But you only actually see the bottom of the wheels, so that makes life easier for us. So we make our box for our, the last wheel on there. And now this is all about little, little boxes. So we draw a thin little box there, a little square next to it. And then the centre of the first wheel is a much bigger box, like that. There we go. And then from that, we draw our first wheel, which again, it's all about drawing ovals. Make sure you show some thickness to it, because the wheels are not paper thin. And another inner line, like we did before. And you've now got to repeat this process three more times along. So, but... Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut up for a few minutes and just concentrate on that and work my way along. Once you've done that, underneath there is a straight line connecting them all. So you draw it directly over the top, I've drawn straight over the top of that. Then above each wheel again, as with this one, there's this little twin triangle with a little line separating. Now you've got to do that behind, just above each box. So you took a little line up. One, two, three, four. Right, once we've done that, make sure we've connected all of them up. Got some little bits in between each one, we'll just add a few lines. Just add a little bit of detail here and there. Right, now we can go back to extending the tender. Now, as you can see, my line wasn't quite long enough. We need to make it a little longer. to about there I think and then we draw a bit of a box here and I 
think we've got the bottom of the tender done. Right, line straight up from the end of that line. Now, I think we need to line this up roughly with our driver's head. So, pretend line across. I need to go a little bit further. There we go. Then, our loop we did earlier. And we connect them two lines up. And then finally, the top of the tender. Now it's got a cover that goes up, so it's a bit wiggly. So you wake away up a little bit. Then that line connects up with that bit we curved back inwards earlier. Now finally on top of that, there's a bit of a very shallow curved line. That goes up, it's like a very shallow curve that goes all the way up into the top of the cab, like so. And that is the general makeup of the Flying Scotsman. Now we've got we're gonna add a few more details just to finish things off and then we can add some shading, I think. Right, back to the boiler. There's several ring sections that make up the boiler. First one is above the first of our arches above our main wheels. So we curve outwards from there. Work our way upwards, and it curves away like that towards the top, just above the smoke deflector. That's the first one. The second one comes out to just to this side of the arch above the main wheel, so we do the same process again. Follow the curvature of the boiler up, and that's our second one. The third one is just behind the arch above the uh, central main wheel so we do a next one and then we actually have one that curves up away at the firebox we draw that one on there as well okay lovely now I think we need to add the emblems on the Scotsman now. Now we'll go on to the cab side first. About halfway up it's got a very small plate. Now that's the manufacturing plate I do believe there. So we draw a little circle, that's all you need, tiny little circle. Now this is where you've got to be really careful. We're going to actually write her number. Now you've got to get this, it's very sideways, very tiny writing. It's microscopic writing you do. So the first number is six. Next one is zero, which will be a very thin oval, followed by a one, which is just a line, another zero, so another oval, and then a three. Six, zero, one, oh, three. There we go. So that's the number in. Take your time with that. It's not an easy thing to do. In the middle of the tender is the British Railways emblem. So we need to do a circle which will be more like an oval because it's on its side. Either side is a little rectangle. Now in the middle, we can't really see any detail. So literally it's just a couple of shapes. That's it. And that's all. Because it's so far away, we can't put the detail on. Right, on the side it says Flying Scotsman. Now literally all you're going to do is just some lines because you can't actually read it from this distance because it's so small. On the front, we've got to put the number again. Now when we shade this, the this number here is white. So it's going to be very difficult when doing that. Then on the front, um, we're going to have to put Flying Scotsman on there. So I think very, very carefully. Flying. Scots. Oh, I 
messed the S, that's my mistake. Rub it out. There we go. Don't leave enough room for the S to go in there. There we go. Very rough. It's not going to be accurate. It's very small. You could really take your time and actually go into really deep and finally go that if you wanted to. That is entirely your choice. At the side of the firebox here, we've got some little bits. So we'll connect them to it with some little bits here. And uh, these will be the joints to open this, this whole section opens. So we'll put them in. The handrail down the side, we need to add some connectors to it. So a little line there. Go along to the next one, one there. Next one is there. Follow the bump as it goes with what was. Another one there. Another one on the other side. And then another one at the end. There we go. Right. A little bit of smoke. Now we don't go mad with the smoke. Nice white fluffy smoke coming out the chimney. There we go. Lovely. Nice and simple. Don't need to overdo it. Now, we'll work our way down to the rails now. So we've got to add a bit more detail to the rails. So we'll continue that line on. And we've got to add another line here because that shows the depth of that rail there. And we'll just show some of the connectors connecting it to the sleepers. This rail here, and the ballast comes up, the ballast of the stones underneath the rail comes up quite high so we can't actually see. So we're going to do a slightly squiggly line. Going up like that. Okay. Right then, next bit, I think we'll add a bit of a coach connected to it, I think. So we've got to do a nice curved line from the top of the tender here all the way down to the bottom. So nice curved line. It's at the bottom of that box there. Well, about the middle of the box, I'd say. And then we're going to draw some straight lines coming off it. Follow the line going upward slightly, of course. Again, we're still going upward slightly. So we're going away from the... Uh, going away from where the uh, image starts. Let's have perspective again. And we've got a curved shape there, followed by a box and an oval in the middle. There we go. And we've got to draw our wheel on again. So it's the same thing as the tender wheels. An oval shape. Show the thickness in the end. A little bit of thinness in between. And that's dark there as well. Now we get to extend the rail now as well. So we need to extend the rail a little bit. Here we go. Now this has got a pair of wheels again. So we've got to do repeat the same process with another wheel. Another box. And that is the bogey, first bogey on the coach. We do a box behind another line here. Right, we need to go up here. So just below the um, start of the roof line for the tender, we'll draw a line coming off that going down and away slightly. There we go. We'll go to about there. We don't need to go any further than that. Then we're going to draw the roof on. So again, start up near the top where the hump of the tender is, right at the top up here. Again, draw a straight line going downwards slightly. Now on the top of the coach, there's some little bumps. We'll draw them on. One, two, three, four, little gap. Then there's some more together. There we go. Now we've got some windows on this coach. There's a very light coloured line just below the centre of the coach. So we'll draw that on there. There we go. And that's going to help us with our windows because we need to leave a gap going above. Let's have a look at the second wheel on the coach. We'll draw a little window. It's a very small window, this one. And we can't actually see the door frame very easily, but we can see the little uh, latches that connect the door. 
We'll draw some of them now. We've got leave a gap. A bigger window this time. And leave a very tiny gap. Then we've got another window for another door. As this is the guard's coach. So there's not as many passenger windows, but there's lots of small windows where bits of baggage and the guard would be. We'll leave a gap, then we've got another large window there. And then, again, what a surprise, another small window, so we'll draw that one on there as well. Go down underneath again, we've got small bumps. Uh, let's see, then we've got another small window, so two small windows together this time. Put them on. Draw some straight lines off that one there, I think. All right, let's go back underneath. Then we've got that line there. Then we've got a straight line. Twin straight line going across. Another line underneath. And then right underneath them windows there, there's a bigger box. So we need to draw that bigger box in. Here we go. And now we're gonna be a little bit craftier. We're gonna actually show we're going to draw a bit of a bush, I think. There's a line side bush coming out here. So we're going to draw some squiggly lines. Just to give the picture a bit more interest. And also it means we don't have to keep drawing the whole train. But it actually gives it a bit more life and atmosphere to it. So we can see a bit of the coach going through the bush there. But not a lot of it. I think we need to add another big window in there actually. We've got a bigger window. It's a passenger window this time. So we'll add that in there. But we can't see any more now. But this just helps to add a bit of life to your picture. If you wanted to, you could carry on drawing the train. But quite often, it just adds to add a bit more to your picture there. And you see it's just lots of very controlled squiggly lines. Not, not random. They're, to degree because they're they're controlled squiggly lines are coming out from the center outwards and I just give it some atmosphere there and we can just show a bit of the ballast as well it's nice curved lines here because it shows the ballast is curved lots of little stones we can't draw an individual one because we will be here forever which we don't want so we just draw a few of them in just just to give it a bit of something I think now, one thing I have spotted, underneath the coach is the wheels towards the back that you can't really see, but we're going to draw them on in shadow. Because they are in shadow. And that rail that we're behind the locomotive, we can actually see it again, just between these wheels. So we can draw that on, actually. There we go. That adds something to the picture. Now, what we'll do, we'll go back to the front of the picture again. Now, behind the train, I'm going to actually draw some more track. It's up to you if you want to draw this on. I'm drawing it on. It's going to just finish off the picture quite nicely. So another set of rails. That's it. That's all we need to do. A couple of lines. There's some more, more ballast. We'll extend this track a little bit here. Add a bit of the uh, undergrowth coming through in the foreground just to show we've got some life into the picture. Now, behind the train, we can actually draw another bush. So just some nice little curved lines. Make sure these are much lighter than the loco because we want the loco to be the centre of the drawing. So just draw some of them on. a bush into a kind of tree. I suppose it could easily be a tree. Nice curved lines. I'm not doing any more than that. Just keep it nice and light. There we go. And we can just extend the smoke a little bit. Just show how far the train has travelled. Very light. It must be light with this. We don't want to overwhelm the picture. Okay, well that's the drawing part complete. What we're going to do next is just do a little bit of shading just to add a bit of depth to the picture. Right, you can leave the drawing as it is, just a normal pencil drawing, or you could add some shading to add some depth to it. Now, there's one or two more details we want to quickly add if we want to do this. There is a very 
tiny little hole there and there's a little stripe going through it which I did miss earlier and that stripe goes round the top of the tender as well. Now due to the light you can't see it very well but I think that's about it. And there's a few dots around here, the bolt holes, rivet holes on the bottom of the uh, smoke box so I'll put them in. Right, a bit of shading. We're going to leave the buffers quite light I think. I think we'll give them a very tiny bit of shading so just press them very lightly. The bottom half of the buffer just to give them a bit of tone. There we go. This is quite bright here. There's a little bit behind so we'll just shade that in very lightly. Right, we're looking for darker areas first, but not too dark. We're going to work our way darker and darker. So what we've got is that's quite light there, then it's darker behind. So we'll just add a bit of darkness behind. There we go. That just pushes that back, back there. Then go up to the smoke deflector. Very carefully, take your time. Just do downward strokes and see I'm always going downwards with the shading and doing it in sections. And as we get to the top it's a little lighter. We've got this dark bit here first and then it gets a little lighter. So we're just going to just lighten. There we go. Look. Just, just little bits at a time. There's no rush with it. It's going to darken the edge of the uh, boiler there a little bit. I'll do the chimney next. There's a ridge, so that ridge is going to be dark. So I'll just go across very carefully. Then underneath, again, going downwards, shade the front gets a little lighter to that side. Darken around the edges a little bit. Again. Right, let's see. Now where we did the steps at the start, some areas are darker than others. So again, working our way downwards very carefully, going up and down. Now this bit's lighter. Just working it in, just bit by bit. Take your time, it's very important that you take time. This bit's darker. So I'm just going to work my way across the loco bit by bit at the front. Some bits are lighter than others. So this bit's lighter in here. And this will help to make the light stand out a bit now. Now we can see through the handle, so we'll darken that bit. That middle step's a little darker, so we'll add the darkness there. Not too dark. I'm not pressing on overly hard, I'm being very gentle. The bit underneath is lighter, and the bit above is lighter, so we'll do them. Um, it's all about pressing on a little harder, a little lighter, depending if you want darkness you press on a little harder if you want it lighter press on less but I'm always going up and down I'm not going side to side always up and down now this bit's darker again you don't need to press on too hard to make the pencil dark if you press on too hard you'll go straight you'll damage the paper you don't want to do that and you leave it like indents into your paper and you don't want that so just be gentle let the pencil do the work this bit in here is quite light, so we press on very lightly. A little bit darker here. That bit's actually a tiny bit lighter, so we'll do that. There's actually a bit of a shape of something there. I can't quite see it, so we'll add that in very just gingerly, just a, a hint that there's something there. Now the, the front of the boiler has got a bit of a reflection on it, so I think it'd be quite good to show that reflection. So we've got a darker bit area here. Which will be the smoke deflector, which curves slightly, but then goes lighter. Then across here it goes lighter still. 
it's very bumpy and gives a tiny bit darker there. Now underneath there's a very light area, I'm going to leave that white actually I think. Then there's what looks to be the reflection of line side stuff and track I think. There's a darker reflection here. See, so yeah, I'm continuously going across, uh, up and down, but working my way across each area. And that shows a kind of reflection. It's going to be lighter at the top because that'll be the sky reflection. So we're just going to go around the uh, display plate there. Darken that in a little bit with a, another line, I think. A little bit of shadow behind the plate. Show that going through there. Just going to darken around the uh, centre bit and also darken around the number. There we go. Right, I think we're good there. Right, let's go down to the bottom. This area is dark, so we'll shade that in. Now the wheel, it's got a reflection on the front, but then darkens underneath, so we'll darken that in. And it's got a light a bit there that's been reflected by the light, so we don't need to shade that, we're just going to shade that very lightly. There we go, look. And we, and that already shows some depth in there. That's darkish. This is quite light, I'm just going to give this a very light shade just to separate it from the buffer beam. Then behind, this is very dark in here, so I'll we'll shade that in. Press a little bit harder to show that it's darker. We've got this area here is light. We've got another area of darkness there, actually. Now the wheel behind, as I said earlier, will be in shadow, so that will be completely darkened out. So we darken that out there. And there's another bit here that's got a bit of darkness, but mainly in light. Then we're onto the other front wheel. Now this is all light by the spoke area, which has got shadows on the spokes. So we're just going to shadow them in with a bit of shading. There we go. But the rest of the wheel is quite bright. So that's that area done already. Very, very quick and easy. You don't need to do a lot of work to add it in. It's just about just selecting what you think is correct. I mean, I'm, I'm working off a photograph of Flying Scotsman to help me. And it's very important when looking at that to get as much detail in as possible. I, it makes it a very effective drawing. It's quite light here again. It's dark underneath here. I'll we'll shade that in dark. There's a curved bit there that I didn't draw in earlier, but we'll do that now. There's another bit here actually that's quite curved. There we go. That's better. So we've added that in. There's a bit dark underneath there. Right, we'll do the cylinders and the front wheels now. So behind that front wheel it's dark, so we'll shade that in. Okay, now underneath, I've got the wheel there, that's got some reflection, it gets darker towards the top. Then again the spokes, we're going to have to add a bit more darkness into them. Remember, keep them pipes nice and clear, because we said they need to be light. Right, the front of the cylinders is dark, but it gets lighter as we go out. So we start off dark on the inside gradually get lighter so press on the pencil less as we come out again dark up here goes to light now we've got light on the top of the cylinder box then it gets there's a darker area which and then a brighter area 
And there's a dark line there. And it's lighter again. Dark on that rail. Because we're underneath the locomotive, it's going to be in shadow. But I don't go right to the tip of the rail there, because I'm showing some of the light. I'm going to show just a little bit there as well. There we go. Now, these wheels, because they're in more shadow, the bigger wheels, they're much darker. So we follow the line with them and just darken them in. There we go. Now we need the rods to stand out a little bit, so these wheels have got to be a tad on the dark side. So, around the rods, be very careful not to go over the rods because they are very bright. They're a brass, silvery colour. We want them to stand out. So, around each spoke, darken them up. Make sure to leave some light to show the spokes are there though, it's very important. And just work your way around very carefully each section now you're not going to go up and down these because you're going with the flow of the wheel you must go with the flow of the wheel on these right then we've got the third wheel to do now remember we can see a bit more of this wheel so you'll be able to add a bit more of the detail in Work your way around. Around the edges of the wheels, you might want to just darken them a little bit as well, just to help them stand out a little. There we go. Now, up here, it's shadow, so we're going to darken that area in. Right, immediately behind the wheel here, it's shadow again, so we go back to going up and down with this bit, each side of the line. There's a little line there, we want to keep that a bit lighter because that's showing up. So we'll try and keep that lighter if we can. Now this bit's quite light here because it's in the light, so we're just going to add a tiny bit of shading in there, just the lightest bit, because it's darker underneath and that will help it stand out. This wheel here, now the front of the wheel is very dark there and it's dark underneath as well. Now around these different lines we've drawn it darkens and lightens so it's all about just adding a little shadow behind each one. Now I'm going to go back underneath just show some of the shadow underneath the loco there. You can just about make out the rail as well. Not very easily, but you can make out a little bit of shadow. Right then, under the cab. There's the rail again, we'll shave that in. Now it's not completely dark under there. Right, now I've got to the tender wheels, I'm still going to stop going on for a moment, I'm going to go up to the top of the boiler because I'm going to start smudging otherwise if I'm not careful. Now the nice thing is the top of the boiler does not need a lot because it's in the light. We do need to put a shadow on the top of the ump on the boiler. Because there's a bit of a shadow there, but this is all light, so we're going to leave that clear paper. Now there's a couple of little bits on top there I just need to add. The whistle area is quite dark, so we're going to shade them in. Now, four little bits there. And the front of the cab is quite shaded, so we're just going to add a little tone there. The roof of the cab is a little darker in colour, so... I'm going to go along for this one, because of the flow of the cab, it's just going to make life a little easier. That's it. We don't want it too dark. Now behind the window is relatively dark but patchy, so we're just going to add a few little lines in there. The front there is a little bit as well, so we're just going to shade that in a tiny bit. 
Now this bit is half and half. We shade that down just that little bit. Till we get to there, then there's more of it in shadow. Right at the bottom of the boiler is darker. Now we've got to do this in kind of rows, so we'll work our way along the boiler. Until we get to that angled bit. Now this pipe here is darker, so we're going to shade that in. The handrail's darker, so we'll give that a thicker line. A darker line, okay. Then we go back along again, do another row. Then do another one. Now set, this fades out into a lighter line there. There must be a reflection there, shining off something. Then there's a lighter line underneath that. And then there's a much bigger area here of lightness before going slightly darker again. Then this triangular area here is quite dark, so we're going to shade that in so it's much darker. Help the uh, nameplate stand out a bit, go over that. Now these steps that we did along the side just need a slight shading, nothing more than that. They're quite light, but they just need to stand out. I'm going to just add a light line there just to help that stand out a little bit. Okay, we are looking good. Just going to make that a little darker there. It needs to be darker. There we go. Just to show a shadow. Right. In front of the cab, I now need to make that a little darker. There we go. Simple dark line. Right then, around the windows, we'll make them a little darker, then we'll just shade them in a little bit. There we go. Now we can't see any details on the uh, driver's face, so we're just going to just very lightly shade him. His uniform's going to be a tiny bit dark. Don't make him too dark, because he's got to stand out a little bit. Now just behind him, this area here is very dark. So we can shade that in, and that help him to stand out a little bit now. Now the gap between the cab and the tender is a tad darker, so we will shade them in. Now the green here does stand out a little bit, so be careful not to go over the number here. I'm just going to go round the number. We just want this area to stand out a little bit more. There. Right, the tender. So the top bit is dark. This bit's nice and light, so I'm going to leave that actually clear. Then there's a darker line there. And then we're going to go into the tones of the tender and we'll do the wheels as well. Right. Still going up and down. Now the front part of the tender, you can see a lot more colour. It's actually a tad darker at the top than it is as you go down, and it gets a tiny bit lighter. The, the, the lines we did earlier can we can still see, which is important. But there's a reflection as you go back and it's much lighter, so we just leave that area whiter. We just add a few little things, as you can see the little bumps in the metal of the tender. Let me go back down the bottom, which is a little on the darker side still. Right, 
the wheels on under the tender. Now this first bit is dark, so up and down again. Work our way along. These bits need to stand out. So around them we shade make it a little dark, not too dark. But just to help them stand out. Now around the wheels, inside the wheels a little darker. The darkest part is actually the thickness of the wheels, so that bit needs to be dark. Do not go over that line. And of course we've got the rail behind which is quite dark as well. You can just do that in between each, each wheel. And that helps that to stand out a little bit. And around the wheels, just some little shading, nothing more than that. We don't want to press on too hard. Just want to create the impression that there's some shapes there holding the wheels onto the tender. Now we're onto the coach. Now between the tender and the coach it's very dark, apart from a little sticker there, a warning sticker. But don't go all the way up to the line because that's the colour of the coach starts just on the inside. This line here of the coach is actually yellow so it will be white in our picture as we're doing black and white. The colour of the coach is a little darker than Flying Scotsman's green. But because of the way the light is it's not going to show up a deal darker on our picture. Gets a little lighter there. And it goes dark again. Still going up and down, remember to go up and down. Now as we go further up the coach, it gets lighter. Now these windows here are relatively dark. The big ones are lighter, the little ones are quite dark. So we'll leave the big ones actually clear, I think. Now the roof itself, the dots on the top are relatively dark, so we shade them in. And then the roof itself is a little on the dark side. We're going to go along, go, go with the flow of the roof this time. Just add a little bit of colour. Nothing, nothing more than that. Just, I say colour, but the tone of the pencil, just to darken it, just that little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to, now I've done that, I'm going to actually make my coach a tiny bit darker at the bottom, just to show. So you may decide to go back over some bits you're not happy with. I've decided that coach needs to be a little darker at the bottom. So I've, done, I've just pressed on a little harder with a pencil. Right at the base of the coach. Now that is darker. So we'll do the two lines. We'll press on a little hard. The wheels themselves. Dark around the rim. And we highlight it up. Add a little bit of shade and show the uh, shadows. To the rail. Now remember the two little background wheels there. They're shaded in. Because they're in shadow. There's a bit of shadow in there, so we can add a little bit of shadow in there. This is quite light, the box. There's some more shadow there. Now I think we've almost got a finished picture. So the rail, I'm just going to darken the rail at the, the top, just that little bit. So I think it needs to be a tiny bit darker. Now I'm going to move the paper just slightly here, just to help me finish this off. Now, you can actually create a little shadow underneath where the wheels are. Because each wheel is creating a very slight shadow. Nothing more than slight, that's it. Now what we can do with this bush is just add a little tone into the bush. So we're just going to press on a little bit in places just to enhance it we may want to just add a few tones into here as well just to bigger depth of field.
And then just I think the final thing is we can just add a final tiny bit of shading to the bush behind just to fade it's more. We're just going to fade out. Don't be very careful with this one because you could easily overwhelm it and it will take over the locomotive here. So we just do that and it just fades it back a bit. Now the smoke is very whitish so all you need to do with the smoke is create just a little bit of shadow underneath. And there we go, we have a finished picture of the Flying Scotsman. Hope you enjoyed this one. A fun challenge to do.